Operation Starfish Prime was a high-altitude nuclear test conducted by the United States, a joint effort of the Atomic Energy Commission and the Defense Atomic Support Agency. It was launched from Johnston Atoll on July 9, 1962, and was the largest nuclear test conducted in outer space, and one of five conducted by the U.S. in space. The operation was most notable for being the largest nuclear test in outer space and creating a public spectacle with bright rainbow auroras in the sky. The Starfish test was one of five high-altitude tests grouped together as Operation Fishbowl within the larger Operation Dominic. A series of tests in 1962 begun in response to the Soviet announcement on August 30th, 1961. The ultimate goal of this test was the experiment with several different ideas. One, to see if a bomb's radiation would make it harder to see what is in space. Two, if an explosion would do any damage to objects nearby. Three, if the Van Allen belts would move a blast down the bands to an earthly target. Four, if a man-made explosion might alter the natural shape of the belts. The scientific basis for these proposals has never been made publicly clear. The military was believed to be trying to figure out if they could theoretically use the Van Allen belts to attack a hostile nation. The Starfish test was originally planned as the second in the Fishbowl series. But the first launch, which was called Operation Bluegill, was lost by the radar tracking equipment and had to be destroyed in flight. The initial Starfish launch attempt on June 20th was also aborted in flight, this time due to failure of the Thor launch vehicle. The Thor missile flew a normal trajectory for 59 seconds, then the rocket engine stopped, and the missile began to break apart. The range safety officer ordered the destruction of the missile in warhead. The missile was between 30,000 and 35,000 feet in altitude when it was destroyed. Parts of the missile and some radioactive contamination fell upon Johnston Atoll and nearby Sand Island in the surrounding ocean. On July 9, 1962, at 9 o'clock Coordinated Universal Time, which translated to 11.09 p.m. on July 8th in Honolulu time. The Starfish Prime test was detonated at an altitude of 250 miles. The nuclear warhead detonated 13 minutes and 41 seconds after liftoff of the Thor missile from Johnston Atoll. Starfish Prime caused an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, that was far larger than expected, so much larger that it drove much of the instrumentation off scale, causing difficulties in getting accurate measurements. Starfish Prime electromagnetic pulse also made those effects known to the public by causing electrical damage in Hawaii, about 900 miles away from the detonation point, knocking out about 300 streetlights, setting off numerous security alarms, and damaging a telephone company microwave link. The EMP damage to the microwave link shut down telephone communications from Kauai to other Hawaiian islands. A total of 27 small rockets were launched from Johnson Atoll to obtain experimental data from the Starfish Prime detonation. A large number of rocket-borne instruments were also launched from Barking Sands, Hawaii as well. A large number of United States military ships and aircraft were operating in support of Starfish Prime in the Johnson Atoll area and across nearby North Pacific region. A few military ships and aircraft were also positioned in the region of the South Pacific Ocean near the Samoan Islands. This location was at the southern end of the magnetic field line of the Earth's magnetic field from the position of the nuclear detonation an area known as the Southern Conjugate Region for the test. After the Starfish Prime detonation, bright auroras were observed in the detonation area, as well as in the Southern Conjugate Region on the other side of the equator from the detonation. According to one of the first technical reports, the visible phenomena due to the bursts were widespread and quite intense. A very large area of the Pacific was illuminated by the auroral phenomena. From far south of the South Magnetic Conjugate Area through the burst area to far north of the North Conjugate Area. At twilight, after the burst, resonant scattering of light from lithium and other debris was observed at Johnston and French frigate Sholas for many days confirming the long-time presence of debris in the atmosphere. An interesting side effect was the Royal New Zealand Air Force was aided in anti-submarine maneuvers by the light from the bomb. These auroral effects were partially anticipated by Nicholas Christophilus, a scientist who had earlier worked on the Operation Argus High Altitude Shots. Operation Starfish Prime was deemed to be a top-secret mission that the government was conducting. However, some hotels in Hawaii offered rainbow bomb parties on their roofs for Starfish Prime. These parties were often advertised as end blast tonight, maybe dazzling, good view likely, 
When the Starfish Prime Bomb had burst, people told of blackouts and strange electrical malfunctions, like garage doors opening and closing on their own, but the big show was in the sky itself. The show, however, was not without consequences as the debris that fell after the explosion would lead to widespread area contamination that may even still persist today. The testers were under the assumption that the debris would only last for a few months. The two immediate outcomes of the Starfish Prime operation were the generation of an immense electromagnetic pulse and the appearance of the spectacular auroras both in the northern hemisphere where the detonation happened and across the equator in the region around the Samoan Islands. Another outcome, which the researchers discovered afterwards, was the formation of artificial radiation belts around the Earth. Starfish Prime Detonation produced a detonation yield of around 1.45 megatons. This was 100 times greater than the detonation of the Hiroshima bomb, which was only a mere 13 kilotons in comparison. The ultimate purpose of the tests were to counter Soviet testing and stay ahead in the nuclear armaments race between the two countries during a very much heightened Cold War. Starfish Prime was an experiment on the surface, but once you look deeper, the discovery is that war is the leading cause of scientific advancement.